Hello, Srini. Hello, Lucas. How are you doing? Doing good. Well, welcome to my uh, to my interview program, and uh, I'm really happy to have you uh, on here. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to share something that I love, which is tango. So I'm also happy that uh, you uh, have given me the opportunity. Yes, and I, um, I think uh, a lot of people will be watching, uh, will be familiar with you, uh, especially the Buenos Aires crowd. But there might also be people watching uh, who might not uh, be familiar with you. So I was wondering if you could, uh, could just give me a, a short introduction uh, for those people uh, uh, of, of who you are and what you do and then uh, stuff like that. General introduction. I, yeah, sure. So I, I live in Houston, Texas, United States. And I've been living here in this country for uh, since 1993. Wow, that's long, okay. Yeah. I'm originally from uh, Hyderabad in India. It's actually uh, in the south, one of the southern states called Telangana. That's where I was born and raised. I studied engineering in India, so I came in as an engineering student to US. I did that and then I uh, started working here. So. Uh, I'm still an engineer, <laughs> so that's been going on. And uh, I was introduced to tango here in Houston uh, around 2000, 2001. So it's been it's been uh, it's been two decades, wow. close to. And I'm still uh, you know enjoying tango. So <laughs> that's me. <laughs> yes. So it's like a never ending uh, passion. It's a never ending passion, yes. Well, that's good to hear. And uh, actually I have um, I've met or seen you for the first time in Buenos Aires, uh, Milonga. Um, and it was actually uh, a place that I think uh, ceased to exist uh, after that. Um, I think it was Lo de, I don't remember her name, it's, um, it was like in La Nacional for a while in uh, 2016. Um, and I think she had to stop with her Milonga because there was some accident with her uh, family or whatever, something, um, yeah, um, tragic. Um, it might be it might be back already. I mean, I haven't been there in a few years, but uh, I just, uh, I think it was like one of these months in July when there's like almost no foreigner around. <laughs> and you were sitting here and there in the crowd with all these uh, with all these uh, locals, so to say. Uh, and it was actually a very interesting uh, experience uh, to see you. And uh, I actually thought you were uh, so. Maybe, I hope that's a compliment. I thought you were much younger than 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 you probably are. Um, so I thought you were maybe like thirty five or something. And I, I thought, well, <laughs> that's cool. There's this young guy uh, who's not from Argentina, and uh, I might be able to relate to him. And he, he was a good dancer. You were a good dancer. So uh, it's a nice memory. Um, and uh, you are a person who is very uh, much connected to Buenos Aires. Um, and that's what, uh, what we're going to talk about uh, today, at least one of the things. Um, but before we, uh, before we do that, um, actually, I'm quite interested uh, because you recently um, went to Buenos Aires uh, about uh, a month ago. You were there uh, during the month of November. And um, that's quite rare right now. Like there's not a lot of people traveling to Buenos Aires, I think, or maybe I'm just behind the, the events in a way, but uh, you seem to be, uh, yeah. Um, it was quite unique for me to see, at least. So uh, I, I was re I'm really wondering if you're uh, if you can tell us a bit about this uh, recent visit and how things are like. You know, for all these people who are who are just starving, uh, you know, they're 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 they want to dance so badly and they want to dance well, but uh, there are not a lot of uh, things going on maybe in their country right now, and it's it's quite a contrast. Yeah, uh, that's uh, that's true. I've I went there in early November, right after I knew that uh, the country has opened its borders for tourists, and I've been waiting to do that um, 
my previous visit was in uh, 2019 i usually go in that time frame july august september and i remember seeing you in 2016 in august uh, so uh, again uh, i thought i would go back in 2020 so but for obvious reasons uh, that didn't happen so i was very eager and uh, to answer you in a nutshell, yes, I'm very much, uh, I love Buenos Aires uh, because of tango. And uh, I always look forward to any opportunities that present to make a trip there, especially to dance in those, in the milongas uh, that we will be talking about. And um, the experience was very, uh, very nice. Uh, it was not very difficult. Uh, you need to have certain paperwork and, uh, you know, uh, and then uh, the milongas are following some protocols right now. So you need to adhere to that. And besides that, I would say, uh, other than people dancing by wearing masks, uh, I think it's pretty much the same. I mean, the, all the energy, the, the passion and the fun, as I remember, always in my previous trips, you know, is back. And that was very uh, refreshing for me to, to uh, uh, see. And, you know, I enjoyed myself for about four weeks and it was time to come back. So I packed my bags and was back to Houston. Good. Well, that's a, that's a great experience. And uh, I've also seen that you're, uh, that you were quite, uh, positive like you like you're saying right now that you are positive about uh, the ambience uh, there and and um, yeah just um, as if nothing has changed even though a lot has changed but um... some of the familiar milongas uh, have resumed uh, uh, so and there are many new ones that have you know started uh, I think we may have also seen each other in a milonga. I think it's it was at that time called El Maipu Milonga in Obelisco, a place called Obelisco on Entre Rios and Estados Unidos. And unfortunately, that place permanently closed. So there were some uh, places that closed forever, uh, but some uh, places like El Beso, Lodacelia, La Nacional, Leonesa, all these places are back. Uh, they are still up and running. Salon Canning, for example, is still back. So uh, it's, uh, it was good to see for me, uh, you know, having danced uh, in these milongas to see them, you know, be back again. But it was also, you know, I was a little sad that Obelisco had to close down because I have many good memories in Obelisco. So it was in that way a mixed feeling, but uh, mostly it was uh, it was you know happy. It was a happy feeling. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Well, what an uh, what an experience. It's um, yeah. What can I say? Um, must have been so strange to um, to 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 do this pretty much every year, and then suddenly you're you're just um, like everything's just gone. And uh... yes, uh, since about uh, beginning of twenty twenty, when things were uh, uh, the way they were, uh, if you like something, you know the first thing your mind uh, kind of dwells on is, for example, you know, when am I going to dance tango again? When am I going to visit Buenos Aires again? So this kind of little separation uh, makes you think about Buenos Aires more. And so all through 2020, my, uh, you know, my mind and my thoughts were uh, centering around Buenos Aires. I was, I have some friends, you know, tango friends, of course, uh, 
uh, the locals who I've been in touch with. And uh, thankfully, Facebook has helped me that way to, you know, be connected with them. Just trying to check in, you know, how they are. And uh, so this kind of went on uh, with no uh, certain indications on when things would be coming back to normal. So this past, the you know, the past year and uh, beginning earlier of this year, it was, uh, you know, uh, the feelings of me uh, of when I would return to Buenos Aires were uh, growing inside me. So all of a sudden when, you know, things took uh, shape for better, uh, when I was hearing about the news that, oh, the milongas have started coming back. Oh, the milongas are happening a lot uh, in August and September. And then in October, I heard the news that the country may be opening up its borders. So I was, by then itself, I was making my plans to uh, book my ticket and be there. So, so it, it all kind of happened in a, in a very, uh, you know, surreal uh, way. But still, you know, I was, I was planning to be there. So, <laughs> and now I have to pinch myself, but did I actually go there and spend one month of dancing? So it's still kind of, a, you know, uh, like a, a very, uh, you know, great, uh, I have many memories that I made. I, I made even more memories, I would say, and it's still fresh in my mind, this latest visit. Okay. Um, so I have to interrupt you here. Like, there's, um, there's quite a lot of noise going on in the background. I don't know if it's. Do you hear it? Like, is it? Uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if, if it's like in the microphone, like noise in the microphone, no, or. No, uh, I think it's my neighbor who is vacuuming his uh, his place. Who is what? I think I, I hear somebody vacuuming their. Oh, their vacuum! House. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, let's hope that. Uh, because uh, uh, I, um, you know, when there's something like that, uh, I always try to prevent. Uh, but in this case, you can't because it's a neighbor. Um, well, let's go on then and just hope people won't uh, won't mind it too much. Um, yeah. So it's um, uh, was it actually the the first time that um, that the country opened since the the, the very long lockdown. The country opened November 1st, November, the first week of November. And uh, it's still, you know, uh, when I went, there were not many uh, tourists, so to say. The tourists were still trickling down. Uh, but I saw that from the South American countries, uh, there were Brazilians uh, already, you know, Brazilian tourists were, you know, were already there but very few Europeans or very few from United States. Uh, and as I was leaving, I, I, I was seeing more and more uh, tourists in the Milongas. Okay. And also uh, from Europe and the US or just uh, Brazilians and... Uh... Uh, from, from Europe and, and, and US. It's, it was happening towards the end of November. So I'm sure that December and January, they would be more tourists joining the Milongas. So that was my general opinion, general feeling. But you were one of the pioneers, so to say. <laughs> I was one of the, one of the, yeah, I, you could say that. I was one of the few uh, tourists to, to join the Milongas in early November. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, yeah, that's, uh... It's like an, uh, it's almost like journalism, you know. You're getting, we're getting like this insider view of, uh, of, uh, of a place that's, um, well, not very accessible for most uh, at the moment. But you were the the one who bought the first ticket, and uh, well, it shows a lot of dedication, right? <laughs> well, in all my previous visits, uh, I've had the experience of dancing both with the locals and the tourists, such as me, from Europe and United States. So this particular visit was, was kind of uh, different in that 
there were uh, not many tourists. So uh, they were, you know, it, they were predominantly locals. And, and then uh, there are some uh, Brazilian tangueros who kind of have made Buenos Aires their home. So they, you know, may have gone for a quick visit to Brazil, but, you know, they were coming back to Buenos Aires. Yes. You mean they were living, uh, they're living in Buenos Aires? They, uh, yeah, I would say they have a second home in Buenos Aires. Okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yes, and um, yeah, uh, I can ask so many different things. Um, what, like, like, what was it a different experience in a way to to only see almost only locals, or does that matter to you, or or are you also fine with the uh, with uh, like when there are more foreigners there or? I think uh, these milongas, which uh, which I'm talking about, uh, you know, be it uh, Barajando in Lodacelia or uh, Lujos in uh, El Beso on Thursdays or uh, Lucy, Milonga de Lucy in Grisel on Monday nights, they have, uh, I would call them traditional milongas of Buenos Aires, which means even the tourists, whether they're coming from South America or Europe or United States, you know, they are all dancing something similar to what uh, I call, you know, a traditional, you know, setting. So I enjoy dancing uh, both with the locals as well as the tourists. So, you know, when the tourists who go there in these milongas, they dance like locals. So I was always happy to dance with, uh, with uh, tourists. And I've had many good dances with uh, people coming from France, uh, with the women coming from Germany, uh, Italy, and you know, United States. You know, many many uh, you know places in United States. I have to say, uh, though, I forgot to mention uh, there were many this time in November. At least in the second half of the month of November, I uh, danced with uh, uh, Asian tangueras coming from Singapore. Uh, Philippines and Thailand, or one of you know those those places. There were many coming from from that from that you know. Th there were more from from Asia uh, than you know than uh, from US or Europe. It was it was kind of very interesting. Yes, it's like a different uh, experience. Well, it's a different experience. It was a different experience altogether, right? Like it must be yes. so. So crazy yes. to to arrive yes. there and and exactly yeah. So uh, the different experience is definitely the you know dancing with you know people you know more more from in 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 Argentina you know from 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 the city of Buenos Aires. But uh, as more and more you know tourists were coming, I uh, I was. I was in because you can you can quickly find out you know who the tourists are once you start dancing with them or if you happen to talk to them and uh, and then I, I I think I danced with a group I'm unable to remember now if they were from Hong Kong or Singapore one of those places and there were three women I danced and they they all the three of them sat in that same table and I had great dances with all the three of them so. And when you um, when you arrived in Buenos Aires, like, was there a, a special feeling, like, uh, in one way or another? Um, like, how did how did you feel? Um... Always, uh, it's the same, and it was same even this time. I have a feeling that I somehow returned home. Well, that's a great time. Uh... And and the minute I uh, uh, land, I mean, it's a uh, you know, it's it's like my whole uh, body and my spirit is is you know filled with joy, and uh, I feel so connected. And I like that city vibe. Uh, 
I like the the taxi rides, you know, traveling in collectivos. I like the noise that the city makes during the day and um, everything. And it's very interesting because I went to Buenos Aires initially just because of tango. And it's interesting how from tango, I started appreciating the city of Buenos Aires itself. I think it's uh, I think it's great to talk with someone who um, shares these feelings because I think there are a lot of people um, who used to go, for example, in Europe, who used to go to Buenos Aires and uh, they've actually found um, many events. I mean, before the pandemic, they, they found many events that that are also uh, satisfactory to them. So in a sense, it, it's like they, they don't need Buenos Aires or maybe they don't enjoy it as much anymore as it used to be. But I'm very much a, a big fan of the of the cultural environment. And I can't find that anywhere else but Buenos Aires. So um, I know it's easy to talk about this because we agree, but uh, I, I really know there are people who um, who may not be as interested in, in, in the Buenos Aires tango or in Argentine culture. So they, uh, they might not agree with us, but um, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's fun uh, to speak with, uh, with someone, um, you know, who, who, who kind of shares the same feeling, right? Of course, of course. <clears throat> and uh, I think uh, these uh, uh, tourists that I have referred to who have enjoyed dancing over the years, in the clubs of Buenos Aires, I think most of them, I think they share similar feelings and uh, they uh, share the same passion. Otherwise, why would I always run into them every year in August or in September, uh, spending as much time as me and seeing them you know, every day in the Milongas. So I think they also share this uh, bond and <clears throat> the more you spend time dancing in Buenos Aires and looking at the city is when you come to realize how interconnected tango and the city of Buenos Aires are. And this didn't happen to me in my initial visits. I mean, I saw the street called Corrientes all the time, but it's over the years, listening to these songs again and again, and then connecting what Caje Corrientes or Cajao means for them and how, how, you know, how inseparable tango and that, that whole uh, you know, downtown life in the city of Buenos Aires is. And then of course, you know, when you uh, mingle with the locals, they will tell you, you know, how much, you know, most of these locals are now, uh, you know, 60, 70, 80 or older, you know, people, which means what, you know, they were probably in their teens and, you know, early, you know, they were young adults when, when they were dancing tango in the city of Buenos Aires. And for them, you know, it's a, you know, it's a lifelong um, attachment. And then uh, this is what kind of makes you realize that you know, tango is so special in Buenos Aires. So, you know, I would encourage anyone who has come to tango to eventually make a trip to Buenos Aires. Of course, I mean, like any arts, I mean, tango is also a subjective feeling. You know, they may uh, find it attractive and they may not find it attractive, but at least they should give themselves the chance to go visit Buenos Aires. Uh, I have known many folks who have danced tango more than 10 or 15 years, but they haven't yet been to Buenos Aires. So if, you know, they should, if they like tango, if they like tango, if they get connected to tango deeply, then I wouldn't see why, you know, uh, that, you know, feelings are going to uh, be more strong uh, you know, in Buenos Aires and experiencing uh, tango in Buenos Aires. Yes, I also very much respect people who uh, who don't. 
and people who um, prefer to go to uh, marathons uh, or encuentros uh, in Europe or even in the US, uh, as um, well seems to be the case that even uh, encuentros are, like, are, are coming to the, to the US. And much about this is um, in a way um, um, like, like uh, what's the word? It's like uh, not reconstructing, but it's like um, it's, it's like uh, um, a copy in a way of, of, of certain aspects of a Buenos Aires milonga, not everything, of course, but um, aspects that a lot of people find important, like the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the way the tables are organized or the, the, the logic of the ronda and the, 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 the good distance between the couples, all these things. And um, yeah, that's something originating from a certain sector of Buenos Aires and Milongas. And um, if people can find that in, well, England or well, that's where I went uh, once, um, you know, it's, it's fun to see a lot of people who are very dedicated to, uh, to tango um with a good level and everything and there's also a lot of very experienced people who went to buenos aires uh, a lot of times uh, and I, I do respect it when they feel like they no longer need to go to buenos aires but when i'm there i always feel like um you know when i go outside i'm in a totally different world like there's nothing to do with tango and what i love about buenos aires is, is, is when I, I just don't feel like it i can just go outside and i'm immersed in this world where this beautiful type of Spanish is everywhere, and and where you have just this, all these all these streets that just they, they just breathe um, tango in a way, even though most people there nowadays don't realize. I mean, there's always the history there, so it's uh, yeah, it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of fun, and I, I miss that. And I was really happy to see your. Uh, I don't check Facebook much, but as a coincidence, I uh, I saw uh, a post of you arriving, and then. Uh, I, uh, of course, I like that. And then every time I logged in, I, I, that's just how the algorithm works. I got uh, an update from you, like in the first uh, place. So it was a lot of, it was a lot of fun to see you um, be there. And also a lot of fun to see you meet, like be on the picture with people I also know. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it was a bit of magic, uh, especially if as uh, the circumstances here are, are uh, quite difficult. Uh, it's not a lot of tango. Um, unfortunately so um it's just so magic to see this this milonga full of people um just like it always was right maybe i'm talking too much but it, i just uh it's just uh it was just great to, to to see you having all this fun and also see you with these pictures of the city not just the milongas but just you know just a great uh great experience even from watching it from a screen I guess it's just it's just, it's just a few pictures on a screen, but I can emphasize so well that uh, empathize so well that that I, you know, it, it really comes alive in a way. That's exactly. I mean, you uh, you basically spoke my heart. Uh, what makes it that special is your friends who have been waiting for you to come, and you know, this is what this is where. You know that bond kind of uh, gets stronger. You know they're so happy, so happy, and they mean it from the bottom of their hearts. You know they they want to. As soon as you know that photo that was you know put on Facebook on my first day of arriving, all my friends in Buenos Aires knew I was there, and it was so happy for them, and they wanted to know, you know, which milonga I was going the following day or that night and so this this uh, level of camaraderie that you share uh, is uh, is a beautiful thing and then and then because of that you you know you uh, um, you have a sense of connection to everything around you so when you come down, you know, from a milonga or, you know, when you're walking on the street, you remember your past memories. Oh, I, I came by this intersection two years ago. And then this is one of the reasons why I take pictures because those moments are captivating to me. And I'm not a, you know, good photographer. I'm just capturing that moment for me personally. And then I, you know, I'm, and, and I share it and it's good to know that, you know, my friends, you know, like it. And, uh, 
to you know go back a little and uh, talk a little bit about encuentros and festivals and marathons you know i've i also like them and i i i respect and appreciate people following tango in any form you know that they uh, you know that they get connected to everything is good um you know perhaps you know this is just my uh, you know this is just my my feeling uh tango also lets uh you to have that freedom of escaping yourself you know it's it's a little escapist um you know place where you may see like minded people like you enjoying a little vacation somewhere and and cuantros and and marathons are perfect for that who would imagine dancing tango in a nice villa in europe somewhere next to a castle but you have 1940s 1930s 1950s tango music sounding in those in in those old exotic places yes. so that experience is probably also very enriching um so you know if you know people you know prefer um, you know encuentros so be it you know it's all good yes yes definitely and um yeah maybe a last question about uh, uh for now at least about this last visit so for example i i've seen pictures of Lois Celia and very interested in like when you when you you know i i know all these venues uh and many people do and they have memories of it so how did you feel when you when you when you walked these stairs and it's just very emotional for me especially lodacelia uh like i mentioned before all these milongas that i have been to uh, the traditional ones are my favorite milongas and if there is any milonga that has uh, been active for more than 10 years then in my opinion it has stood the test of time mm. kachirulo is a milonga that has been going on since 2003 in various locations luhos is a milonga that has been going on since 2003 in various locations Lucy's milonga has been there for a long time. Uh, the milonga uh, Apuro Tango uh, in uh, Salon Canning has been going on on Sundays since 1981. So this is, you know, to run a milonga and you know take it to more than a decade speaks for itself they don't need to prove to anybody you know how successful they are or you know what uh, you know what the milonga means to the even the organizers or or the or the people who go and dance uh <clears throat> having said all that why i my you know personally i i have a special connection to lodacelia is uh, this this place is a magical place you know in all these you know different milongas i remember my very first visit going there in 2009 and i was like a a kid in a in a toy store i was i was so uh, amazed and attracted and um I was having goosebumps all over my body. Uh and I will never forget that uh, first experience. Uh my initial visits were only for a week. And in that week I went twice to Lodacelia and I enjoyed my time there a lot. And I have since uh that first uh, visit there always yearned to you know being lodacelia and like anything in tango you there is always you know a flow there is an ebb and and you know the, you know the, 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 there is a you know a crest and a trough um i believe in 2016 after the passing of uh, celia blanco uh 
that spirit that I was carrying with me from 2009 to 2016 was perhaps uh, missing for me. Uh, I wouldn't say um, uh, it was not present at all, but uh, I think uh, the uh, some of the fun I found was lost in 2017. Um, until my following visit in 2018, when uh, Johnny and Nor Norma in, in uh, Logasalia started the Milonga Barahando. So 2018 was a great return for me, you know, personally, because for me, uh, if I can tell you that coming back to Buenos Aires is coming back home, then um, Lodacelia is like my house. I feel that Lodacelia is my house. I can come knock there at any time and the doors will, will, will open with open arms. So it is that special for me. And 2018, 2019 were memorable trips for me. Uh, and, uh, and that, you know, sense of, uh, attachment was uh, uh, reaffirmed, I can happily say, when I went last month. Uh, I, there were uh, three milongas I would go to, Barahando on Wednesday and Barahando on Sunday, and a milonga called Remembranzas on Fridays. There were uh, about 200 or so people partying, you know, in these milongas. And it was just like, just like, you know, the times before for me. Well, that's great. You know, I, uh, yeah, like, like I said, it's, um, well, you're, 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 I didn't, I haven't said that before, but uh, you're, you're very good at uh, expressing yourself. So it's, uh, it's like, I can, I, I can really feel what you're, what you're trying to say about all these things. Uh, and if uh, pictures, you know, say, you know, more, probably videos, you know, speak a lot. Uh, they might not translate everything, but uh, I had the pleasure of uh, taking, you know, documenting some of my, uh, my experiences there. And uh, I have a YouTube channel uh, in my name. So those who would who are interested to check them out can see how, you know, how dancing was last month, uh, not just in Lodacelia, but in all the other milongas that I have visited. Well, I'll definitely link your uh, uh, channel in the description under this video. So uh, I will. that's very interesting. And I, I've actually watched a few of those videos and uh, even some of the videos I went back uh, all the way to uh, 2016. Yes, and uh, you know, it was uh, I, I didn't know about the channel, so it was interesting to uh, see all this uh, material and of moments I remember myself as well. Um, so I want I would like uh, to know more about uh, like your relationship with Buenos Aires, but um, to actually um, reach that point, I first want to know a bit like um, how you discovered tango and and uh, start like you mentioned a little bit, but let's. Let's focus on that uh, now. Okay. So uh, my first introduction to tango was in this city, Houston. And uh, to give you a little context, uh, even prior to that, I've always been a connoisseur of uh, arts, be it uh, Indian semi-classical music or Indian Bollywood music or, um, you know, Indian classical dance. Uh, although I was never a, a trained student in that, I may have had a few classes when I was in school growing up in India. But uh, arts, music and dance have always uh, kindled a certain uh, chord inside me. Um, when I came to United States, when I did my degree, when I was working, uh, I was longing for more than anything else, a partner dance. 
So I ended up taking um, uh, some partner dances, uh, both in New Orleans as well as in Houston. I, so I lived most of my life either in New Orleans, Louisiana, and then the rest I lived in Houston, Texas. So they were initially uh, like ballroom dances, ballroom, uh, foxtrot, waltz, ballroom tango, some salsa. Uh, interestingly, of all the uh, these dances, it was ballroom tango that uh, caught me. And as I was as I was learning that, uh, I came to discover Argentine tango. It was actually the ballroom tango instructor who said, Trini, you seem to be very interested in tango. If you really like tango, you should check out Argentine tango. That is very honest. <laughs> yeah, I was very honest. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I give full credit to him for that. So in those days of internet age, I was able to find uh, a, a little advertisement about Joan Bishop and Roger Soto teaching Argentine tango at, at a certain location. So I checked it out and the, my very first class uh, with Joan Bishop was an eye opener for me and it kind of sucked me in right away. And uh, uh, Joan Bishop uh, is a very special person. She's my friend and I've taken, uh, been her student for many, many years. And luckily for me, uh, she uh, teaches only Milanguero tango. So mm. I was introduced to Milanguero tango right from the get go. Cool. And what was also interesting about uh, her teaching style was, uh, you know, <clears throat> she would focus on simple things such as, you know, connection and, you know, stepping to the beat of the music and then lead and follow. And for me, uh, uh, I told you that, you know, maybe I knew a little bit of Indian dance. So, but still, I mean, tango was still very new to me. I mean, it was a foreign uh, thing for me. So that was, you know, very good foundation. I would say that she laid very early on along with Roger Soto. Both of them were excellent teachers. And uh, she also would invite uh, people such as Susanna Miller, Cacho Dante, Alicia Pons, uh, who would like, you know, then, you know, take us to the next step. So it was through Joan Bishop that uh, just the following year, I think it was 2001, maybe, maybe 20 years ago, 2000, early 2002, was when uh, Susanna Miller came to Houston to give a workshop. And so my point is my graph was always growing, you know, initially with ballroom tango, it was great. And then with Argentine tango under John Bishop, it increased. Then Susanna Miller, it was like, you know, the curve was going up. And I have never stopped uh, studying with uh, Miss Miller. And uh, every year was uh, was adding more to my uh, knowledge of tango and Cacho uh, uh, Dante also. I took uh, many workshops with Cacho Dante in those early years of 2002 to 2004 when he would frequent Houston every year. Uh, so that's where it all began. Uh, it began in Houston and then I was also very happy to go and check out festivals in the United States. I remember enjoying myself in the Milanguero Labor Day weekends in Denver. They were a huge success. People all over from the United States and uh, many other you know, nationalities from Europe would come partake in the, in the Denver festivals. So the graph was, growing again and it was not until 2008 though that I had my first trip to Buenos Aires so even though I had my my baby steps in tango in you know close to 20 years ago it was not until 2008 that I went to Buenos Aires and and this graph 
was gaining slope more and more. So all the foundations that were laid by uh, John Bishop and then Susanna Miller find they found expression uh, when I went to finally dance in Buenos Aires and I was making one-on-one -on -one connection. Up until that time, these Milangueros were still mythical figures for me. Until I saw them right next to me and dancing around them was like a, a jubilation of sorts. So I was also fortunate to uh, take uh, classes from many Milangueros uh, who frequent Buenos Aires. I took lessons with Pedro Sanchez, he's still my maestro. I took uh, many, many classes with uh, Raul Pato Capelli. Uh, I took classes with Jorge Uzunian. I took classes with uh, 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 Juan uh, Topalian. Many, many of them. I would, you know, these were the people I took lessons with and then many others just by watching, just by watching. So these Milangueros would welcome you, especially when they saw that there is a foreigner who is getting connected so much to their culture. They're very, very um, generous people. Uh, they show their generosity in a in a in a myriad uh, fashion. So I was learning mostly by osmosis, mostly by talking to them, mostly by taking classes with them, and they would love to share always, you know, what tango meant to them. And this is how again you get connected to the city through their stories, because their stories are intertwined with the city of Buenos Aires. It's very so, interesting to hear this um, perspective. So I hope I'm not interrupting uh, you too much here, but go on if you want. But I just want to say that I think for a lot of women who visit Buenos Aires, uh, these milongueros were, um, were were the most special because they could dance with them. But you're you're telling us the perspective of someone who was like a colleague of them. Uh, another male and uh, who still learned a lot from them even though you weren't dancing with them so uh... exactly exactly why is because <clears throat> learning is a process that comes from you know many different uh, directions a little impression you know can be like a learning ground uh, you know because why they they inspire you it's their whole uh, demeanor and you know the how they behave in a milonga you know becomes a a a great uh, subject of study and here i would like to point out uh, a a person who probably people who are in milangara tango would have heard or you know may have read her blogs her name is janice kenyon she has a blog called tango chamuja and she has, from her own um, perspective, uh, has created what I would say a little encyclopedia of these milongueros and milongueras who, uh, you know, share their passion for this uh, dance. And uh, Oftentimes, you know, her blog uh, was my uh, source of information if I wanted to go check out uh, a new milonga or not. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Lodacelia and El Arranque were two milongas that I may have uh, picked up by reading her posts at that time. Uh, I think it was around 2008 that uh, this Tango Chamuja was started. And I, you know, I would always be uh, up and ready to see who the new Milangueros that were being covered by Jan. So uh, it's, uh, it's, these are all, you know, wonderful uh, sources of uh, information or study material for anybody who is, uh, you know, who wants to learn tango. So there are so many ways that you can learn. Yes. 
and um, you seem to be very much uh, um, what's the word like your 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 uh, perceptive uh, your um, like you're open to um, to learn and to receive information and, and just grab the opportunities uh, that are in front of you. So uh, yeah, that, that's great. I loved how you mentioned uh, Janus and uh, yes, um, I um, I love how you mentioned the uh, Bilongueros because that's of course also always a topic that that will uh, come up if you if you discuss Buenos Aires Milongas and. Uh, yeah, um, so considering the, the time, actually, I want to ask you a question because I, I just said like you learned a lot from these Milongueros, even though you were a man, because you were uh, their friend and their, or their student or you just watched them or all these reasons. But actually, a topic I don't know a lot about, I mean, that's, that's totally my fault, but I don't know a lot about uh, the Milongueras like in the sense of, of um, and you, you've been dancing there for, for a long time. So is there something you can teach me or teach the audience about the female version of this? Because I think it's always, it's always about, in a way about the, 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 the old male dancers, who've, who've, the original dancers who've been dancing for so much time. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, foreign visitors who come to dance with them and, uh, or at least for those who still remain, because that's also a tricky subject. Like it's 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 dying out in a sense, just because people are getting getting old. Uh, I mean, it's a natural thing. But um, I've always been intrigued by this question. Like, what what is the female side of this? And I haven't really seen a, a clear answer to it yet. Excellent question, I would say, uh, because uh, uh, milongueras are just the female counterpart of milongueros, you know? And uh, if I can say so, uh, they have even a bigger role to play in my, um, uh, in my passion for tango. Uh, first, because I'm a guy and I'm dancing with women and I share my feelings with this, with this woman who are called milongueras. Milangueras are even less conspicuous than the milangueros. But I can say that for every milanguero, there are 20 or 50 milangueras. <laughs> so they, uh, uh, what they transmit to you when you dance with them are imprints that are going to remain on your soul, not in this life, but in future lives. So it's very, it's very, very deep and profound. And this is also a subject that intrigues me because uh, possibly uh, they have such a strong, uh, connection is because they have probably danced with these milongueros. So they can share, for example, me with 20 years of uh, dancing. Uh, if I get connected to a milonguera on the dance floor, she is transmitting what her experience has been so far in tango. Perhaps she was dancing, you know, since she was 15, 16. And uh, imagine the number of, you know, milangueros that uh, this lady must have had uh, experienced in her dancing life. So all of that comes and gets... Uh, um, shared in this, in this, you know, in this embrace. So um, they're very, very unique, and I'm. I was very happy uh, to see uh, Milangueras again, especially in Lodacelia, but also in in El Beso and and other places. Uh, uh, Luckily, you know, now the milongueras 
and Milangueros have Facebook accounts. So they're all they're all there on Facebook. So you can be actually a friend with them on Facebook. And it's incredible. They have, you know, their grandmothers, great grandmothers probably. Uh, they have a life of their own, but they connect something deep and something special when they go to these milongas. You know, with my language becomes a barrier, whether it's English, Hindi, Telugu, or French, or Dutch. You can only say so many things. So um, it's very, very difficult to describe, uh, you know, that, that strong uh, sense of feeling. And I think I saw the interview that you had with uh, uh, <clears throat> Felipe and, uh, I know. and his partner. Yeah. And it is something like how she was explaining about what it is to dance with a milanguero. And it, you just flip flip it backwards. It is that same feeling about how I can say when I'm dancing with a milonguera. Yeah, and it might just be like one of one of the reasons might just might just be this cultural um, um, context of you know this is the music culture of plays the a city. big role. Yeah. Culture plays a very big role uh, when it comes to art. Uh, you know, it is. That doesn't mean you have to be a local to experience this. You know, no. even a foreigner can, you know, can can come and and enjoy, you know, this uh, this culture. Yeah, but it has like it has a layer of depth that. Um, yeah, that, that's harder to find elsewhere. Um, even though, of course, yes. there are, there are yes. a lot of dancers who have been dancing for like uh, thirty or forty years. Uh, I mean outside of Buenos Aires, but still it's, uh, if you have people who actually grew up with this, um, with this dance, uh, it's such a different story. And even I think like, you know, the problem of tango, one of the problems is that uh, it's not really recognized nowadays uh, very broadly in their society, but um, at least like, I think a lot of people who started dancing because I also know people who from like their appearance, you might think they are, they've been dancing for 50 years or something, but they've just been dancing for 20 or something. I mean, that's also long, but it's, it's, a, it's a different story. But still these people, they were probably familiar, familiar with, um, with the music in their, in their childhood or like there's some memory going on. They're connected to, uh, with that later in their life. Exactly. So, I think you hit the you hit the right point. That's what it is. They may have had tango in their house, and probably when they were young, they were probably not that much interested in tango because probably by then rock and roll was probably yes. their choice of music. But somehow when they attained a certain mature age, when they became mothers, or in some cases, probably when they even became older than being a mother, that sense of what their aunt or their dad was playing in the living room comes to haunt them. Yes, that was the right Probably word, yes. that's when they just then took their first tango lesson and it's okay. So these people are probably, like you said, maybe have may have been dancing only for 20 years, but because they, it's in that culture, it's so, when you're going to these milongas regularly, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a school. A milonga is a school. So your learning curve is, is much, is much more stronger. So they quickly attain to the same state as the milongueras who have been dancing all their life. That's why it's so beautiful to be, uh, to have been born in Buenos Aires or to have been raised in Buenos Aires, even though you were not introduced to tango. It's uh, tango can come much later into your life, but the advantage of being in Buenos Aires is you don't know anyone how long they will live or last. So in that short, 
life bandwidth, they can uh, still be able to, you know, enjoy this tango quickly because every milonga is a, you know, is a school and you, you feel connected and, you know, you, the, the learning process is much, much quicker. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to say one thing, uh, because uh, when I first was intrigued by this Milangueros, in 2000, I was already being fed information that the Milangueros were dying. And that, uh, you know, if somebody had to see the real tango, they have to, you know, make it quick. Otherwise, you will probably not see them. <clears throat> So I, I thought by 2008, I already missed the bus because I went so late. <laughs> uh, but when I saw, I saw, you know, who were dancing at that time in 2008, I couldn't come to grips with the fact that Milangueros were dying. I said, what Milangueros were dying? Milangueros are right in front of me dancing. Milangueros are kicking and, and you know, staying alive quite well. And of course, you know, those ones that I saw in 2008, they probably died in 2010. Those that I saw in 2012 died in 2015. And then came uh, 2020. So in November, 2021, when I went back to Buenos Aires, I'm happy to report that I have seen milongueros and milongueras that I have never seen in the past 13 years. Which means, which tells you what? Buenos Aires is a big city. We don't know how much tango there is. A milanguero sometimes can go to a sleeping underground for 10 years and decide to come walking one day. Or he may have been sleeping for 20 years. But for some reason, this pandemic has also rekindled these souls. So people who are probably already quarantining themselves for self-imposed exiles, I saw them coming out and thumping on the grounds of the dance floors. This was the most uh, re, uh, you know, reaffirmative statements for me that no, tango is not dead. No, milongueros are still there. Of course, milongueros are dying in huge numbers, but even for those who are fans of milonguero tango, I want to emphasize that if you really like this dance and if you open your eyes, you will see how many milongueros are still dancing. Yes. And is there also something you can say about uh about the future i mean at, at some point they'll all be dead i mean i can't say it in a more diplomatic way i guess but yes. um but do you think there's yes. some kind of um like or maybe i should ask just more broadly what like what do you think even if you don't even think of only the milongueros or milongueras uh, if you just think of the generation who's mostly dancing traditional tango i mean it's 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 not a not a really young brand of people. Uh, what do you think in general about uh, yeah. about the future of these milongas, especially after the pandemic, of course? No, it's a, this is a very good question again, and uh, not that it hasn't crossed my mind, especially in the two years of uh, uh, you know lull that we had uh, <clears throat> to to answer this question there are three things that need to happen uh, to uh, that, you know, that I think will, will, you know, I'll be able to answer this in three parts. The first thing is for the Milongero tango to be sustainable, the, the breeding grounds should be Existing. What do I mean by that? I mean, places like El Beso and La Vesalia should be up and functioning, number one. Number two, the DJs who are playing in these milongas 
should still be playing that music. If these two elements are there, the third one, which is probably a little bit more difficult, but not something that cannot be achieved, is a new wave of the milongueros, you know, will be will be will be coming. Because if you if you think about it, uh, in the last 20 to 30 years, the clubs of Buenos Aires have always been reverberating with the music of tango. And there were people dancing all these 30 years. And when I say people dancing, these were not old people. These were people who probably in mid 90s were 20 year olds. And now these people are turning 60 now. So in some ways they have already been educated in one way or the other by the generation you know before them so so these people are entering entering the scene now so uh, to think that the milangero is fading away is is a is a bit of like a you know uh, uh, like a a surreal expression of uh, you know feeling sorry about something which is not true. Mm, mm, and yes. I wanted to say that because I've just gone there after the pandemia and to look at the the spirit. Actually, it, in some ways, it has come back with a bang, a bigger bang. Uh, it is true that there are people who have departed, but the people who have departed have also laid the seeds. Now for these seeds to germinate, the first two should be there. These places that I talked about should be functioning, which means the city should be there. And then the people who are playing music in these uh, clubs should be there. And I'm happy to say on both accounts, the milongas that are the the barahando milonga and remembranzas is being organized by a, a guy who is 40 years old is younger than me and uh, you know the the person who plays uh, music on wednesdays in his milonga barahando is danny borelli who is 50 years old now 40 and 50 years is considered very young we are considered like little kids in the in the you know in the circles of Buenos Aires. Yes. Which goes to show you that you know the future is strong. Yes. Wow. That's a great message. Yeah. And uh I'm very Erwin, happy to, uh, Erwin, the person that you interviewed is uh, even younger, is 45. And there is another guy called Brian Mujica who plays uh, for uh, El Maipu and some other milongas. He's even younger. Yes, yes. And these DJs have already been tutored, lectured, educated by the people who have departed. Yes. Leaving an indelible impression, you know, in their uh, bodies and spirits. So how can one say that this is a fleeting uh, uh, art? It's definitely not. Definitely not. Well, you've said that uh, very eloquently. And uh, what I like, uh, what I love about these interviews is that I gain so many new perspectives, and so do my viewers, of course, um, that I haven't considered um, before, or maybe considered, but it's just a different uh, way of looking at it or a new impulse. and. I think it's very important to have something like that uh, going on because I think in a way you're always like you're already like what you were saying about this older generation, uh, you know, um, giving you this information. I mean, there's always going to be people who will receive the same information or similar information from the the messenger. Exactly. Like this is uh, it's like a something that just repeats uh, itself. Exactly. And that is the continuity of that culture. And uh, I, I think there are all the ingredients and elements are there for, uh, you know, the Tango Milangero to be having a bright future. Well, thank you, uh, 
for your great uh, your great uh, musings today and Thank you. Uh, yeah I, uh, I was very happy to uh, get to know you a little better uh, this way and uh, to hear your perspectives um, and uh, well I hope to see you uh, in the one and only home uh, at some point and uh, that's uh, well it's a it's a very exciting uh, thing to to know that things are just uh, you know going to be all right in a way and uh, yes uh, it's been uh, super interesting to talk with you about that so thanks a lot and uh, see you next time Sure. Uh, thanks for giving me this opportunity, Lucas, and uh, um, I would love to be back. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye.